Now that we have seen that we can formulate the shortest path problem with an optimization problem in an infinite dimensional space, let us now discretize this problem and uh, formulate uh, and formulate it and um, formulate it in a finite dimensional subspace. Okay. So the idea of discretization is. to restrict the space of the feasible uh, gammas to a finite dimensional subspace. How do we do that? Um, the idea is to restrict yourself to um, only those gamma which are piecewise linear. And uh, to this end, choose some number n. Um, so this is a natural number, preferably, yeah, greater or equal than 1. That's enough. And... Um, restrict gamma to the space of piecewise linear paths with n support points. Uh, where we say where we say support point for each of the like breaking points, it would probably be better to write breaking points right here. So the idea is that um, you have your points A and B, and now you're going to take only those paths which have this form. I don't know, like this. So here you, you see A is gamma of 0, B is gamma of 1, and then you have uh, these points here, gamma of 1 over n, gamma of 2 over n, and so on. At the end, gamma of n minus 1 over n, and this is gamma of n over n. Okay? So... Um, the idea is that we, we choose uh, n plus 1 points from x0 to x capital N um, in Rn. Um, this is the small n. And um, and we set gamma of k over capital N um, we define this as x k. So for each uh, k between 0 and capital N. And then we do a linear interpolation um, between those two po those points. So we set gamma of t um, with t between k over n and k plus 1 over n um, as, let's see, um, so we want to have xk in this, at this end and we want to have, um, so at this, if, if t is equal to k, k over n, then this thing here, this, this, uh, this expression in the parentheses will disappear, so we have xk, that's what we want. And if we go further to x, uh, to t equals k plus 1 over n, then, uh, then we want to be in xk plus 1. And what we need in between is that, mm, this is not good, 
It's not good. So first of all, we need to subtract this point again. And then we want the factor in between this xk plus 1 minus xk to be 1 when, we, when t is equal to k plus 1 over n. So if t is equal, equal to k plus 1 over n, then we have k plus 1 over n minus k over n, which is 1 over n. So we have to multiply with an additional capital N here. And we see this expression is linear in k. So this is a linear interpolation between those two points xk and xk plus, uh, xk plus 1. And if you set t equals to k, k minus n, then the second um, sum n disappears, and this will be k plus xk. If you set t equal to k plus 1 over n, then this whole thing will be 1, and this will be xk plus xk plus 1 minus xk, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now uh, we have seen that we can choose x0 to x capital N, which will be the uh, variables of our new discretized optimization problem. And from this, we can, uh, from, from those points, we can define a piecewise linear curve. And uh, now instead of, um, instead of optimizing over those curves, we will be optimizing over these uh, points. And one further step is required. Um, so we have seen um, how to replace this. We can, we can even mark this maybe. Now uh, for, for these piecewise linear curves, absolute continuity is automatic. Um, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, absolute continuity means that you can take the derivative and um, integrate and then you will get the, the total uh, length of the curve and this will be guaranteed for, for all piecewise linear curves here. Um, so the question is what do the objective function and, and the constraints mean? So the constraints are easy uh, as you see here even gamma of 0 should be a and gamma of 0 is x0. So the constraints are given by um, x0 equals a and xn equals b. By the way, this one is x1, this one is x2, and this one is xn minus 1. Okay, and, and, and now we have to take care of the, of the objective function. So what, what uh, does what is the objective function if we express it in terms of x0 to x capital N? And um, okay, let's calculate this. So z uh, integral 0 to 1 of gamma dot of t dt. Okay, so it seems very convenient since we have defined this in a piecewise, in a piecewise fashion that we just uh, split up this integral and from k equals 0 to capital N minus 1 and then we take the integral from k over n to k plus 1 over n of gamma dot of t norm dt. Okay, and this is equal to um, this integral, uh, let's, still, let's still write it. Uh, what is the derivative of, of gamma in, in this interval? Well, uh, this is constant, so you can ignore it, and all the all this other stuff here is also constant. So you have uh, what uh, you, you end up with the the thing which what is which is uh, multiplied with t. Um, so it's capital N times x k plus one minus x k, and from of, of this you have to take the norm and the integral. 
Okay, and you see that uh, the, this integrand does not depend on t, and therefore it's just the multiplication of the length of this interval with, uh, with uh, what's, in, what, what's inside. So the length of the, in, the interval is 1 over n, and then you have n times the norm of xk plus 1 minus xk. Okay, and if you want to write this even easier, then it's this. You just sum up the distances between uh, consecutive points. So now we have uh, we have all the parts um, we have discussed. Uh, the constraints and we have discussed the objective function. So we have all the parts together uh, in order to reformulate this. So the reformulation, or it's, it's, it's actually, actually an approximation. It's, it goes like this. Minimize the sum over uh, k of norm of xk plus 1 minus xk. Okay, such that, as we have discussed, x0 is equal to a, x capital N is equal to b, and over, now we have finitely many variables, so we have x0 to x capital N. Okay, so this is a finite dimensional problem. Um, now let's have a closer look. Uh, we have said that, that in the, in, in, for the infinite dimensional problem that this norm here is not differentiable. And we have the same problem here. So whenever we have xk plus 1, equal to xk, um, then this uh, expression here is not differentiable and so we might run into problems when we solve this naively with a gradient uh, solver or even worse with Newton, with the Newton method. And um, how many variables do we have? So we have here Okay, we of course we can replace uh, the constraint. We, we can replace the variables x zero by a and x capital N by b, but it doesn't really matter because that's the constant number of variables. So here we have n plus one variables, and since we are in R n, and I should actually write this here. Each of these variables has n components. So we have O of capital N, small n, variables. And depending on how fine you discretize this, and of course this problem is not really worth discretizing, but there are other variational problems which you can discretize in a meaningful way. And the more and more variables you have, you, the, precise, uh, the more precise the uh, your solution might approximate, your, the more precisely your solution might approximate the infinite dimensional uh, problem. And then you want to choose a really high capital N. And whenever you have a large, num uh, uh, a large dimensional space, then this uh, small n might, be la might become large. And so uh, for fine discretizations, this might actually become a large scale problem. And this is everything I wanted to say about this shortest path problem, which is one problem which you can always keep in mind uh, when you're, uh, when you're uh, reading this course and you're reading about um, this type of objective function, for example.